you alone keep my lamp burning you have turned the darkness to light set my feet high on this mountain my enemies to flight so I I will praise you as long as I live and I I will praise you again and again when I walk through the rally I will not fear you are my strength and my shield Everything around me is overtaken I know I'll never be shaken No, never be shaken No, never be shaken No, never be shaken No, never be shaken You oh, will Lord, keep my lamp burning You have done darkness to light set my feet high on this mountain my enemies to flight so I I will praise you as long as I live and I I will praise you again and again when I walk to the valley I will not fear you are my strength and my shield Everything around me is overtaken I know I'll never be shaken No, never be shaken No, never be shaken No, never be shaken No, never be shaken, no, shaken. No, shaken. Alright so it doesn't matter what pandemic is going on, we will never be shaken. Okay, one more song. The song says, Our God is a great big God. And He holds us in His hands. What kind of a God are we talking about? He is higher than the skyscraper. This means the tallest building that you can think about. He is higher than that. He is deeper than the submarine. Things that go underwater, he is deeper than that. He is wider than the universe. You can't measure the universe. And he is wider than that. And he is beyond my wildest dreams. And this God has known me and he has loved me. From when? From before the world started. And it's wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. He's higher than the skyscraper. He's deeper than the submarine. He's wider than the universe. On my wildest dreams, he's known me and he's loved me for the world began. Wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hand He's higher than a skyscraper He's deeper than the submarine Wider than the universe Beyond my wildest dream He's known me and He's loved me For the world began Wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. Last time, our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. 
Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hand. And he holds us in his hand. And he holds us in his hands. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we believe that even at this end of this year, when we come closer to the new year, we thank you when we look back, we see that the whole year you have been holding us in your hands. You have been protecting us under your wings. And Father, your word has been leading and guiding us. You have been teaching us many, many things about God, about our, our Savior Jesus through the word of God. We thank you, O oh Lord, because you have a plan for each one of our lives and you're fulfilling, you're accomplishing that plan in and through everything that we study here. And we pray that this evening, as you speak to our hearts, keep our eyes and ears and hearts open that we may hear you speak to us. We thank you and praise you, O oh Lord. Thank you for each one of us whom you have kept safe throughout this year. Help us to know you more today. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Right, so turn your Bibles all the way to Mark's Gospel. Okay, Mark's Gospel, chapter 7. We just have a small passage today, and that's from verse 24 to 30. Six verses. Mark chapter 4, verses 24 to 30. And from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and did not want anyone to know, yet he could not be hidden. But immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said to her, For this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. Right? So, you will find in your chat box, I will give you the parallel passage. There is only one parallel passage and that is from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21 to 28. Okay? Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28 gives you the same event and it is there uh, where Jesus actually uh, speaks a little more into that lady. Okay, You find that this lady actually came in the beginning and she was begging the disciples to heal her daughter. And then these disciples get irritated and they come and tell Jesus. And then Jesus tells her this, this conversation happens between Jesus and her and then Jesus heals her daughter. Okay, Now in both these situations, both in Matthew's gospel and in Mark's gospel, we don't see the daughter. The daughter is not brought to Jesus. Only the mother comes to Jesus and begs her to heal her daughter who is at home. You know, the last verse says, she went home and found the child lying in bed and the demon gone. So the child was always at home and the mother came alone to beg Jesus, okay, to heal her daughter. Now, the first verse, verse 24 says, from there he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Okay. Now, if you want to see in your Bible, at the back of most of these Bibles that you have, you have a small map which talks about Israel during the time of Jesus. Okay? If you have that map behind your back, you will see <coughs> Galilee on top and above Galilee, you will find Tyre and Sidon. Okay? These two cities are there above Galilee on top, okay? which means it is north of Galilee. It's north of Galilee, you'll find the city called Tyre and then Secondly, above Tyre, you'll find the city called Sidon. Now, these two cities are 30 kilometers away. The Tyre is 30 kilometers away from Galilee and Sidon is 30 kilometers away from Tyre. Okay, So, which means Sidon is 60 kilometers away from Galilee. Okay, I'll say it again. Gal from Galilee to Tyre is 30 kilometers. From Tyre to Sidon is another 30 kilometers. So, Jesus traveling all the way from Galilee to Sidon will be 30 plus 30, 60 kilometers. So, he, those days he could only travel by foot. But Jesus still made that journey. 
Now, who is living there in Tyre and Sidon? Not the Jews. Only very few Jews live in Tyre and Sidon. Majority of the people who live there in Tyre and Sidon are Gentiles. Gentiles means non-Jews. Okay. And this lady is basically from a background which is called Syrophoenician. Okay. Phoenicia is an is a is a country, and Syria is also a country. Bring it both together, and you get Syrian and Phoenician. Okay. Syrophoenician. Okay. That's what this lady's background is. So she's a mixed race. She's from. Maybe, maybe her father is from uh, Syria and her mother is from uh, Phoenicia. We don't know. So Syria and Phoenicia mixed together. Okay, That's, how she, that's her background. She's from Syro-Phoenicia. She was definitely not a Jew. She was a Gentile. Now, Jesus was born among the Jews. He is a Jew. So Jesus was sent to the Jews. And later Jesus sends the disciples or his apostles to the Gentiles. So Jesus was not sent directly to Gentiles, but Jesus did have a lot of conversations with Gentiles. A lot of Gentiles came to see Jesus. Even at the birth of Jesus, the wise men who came to meet him were not Jews. They were wise men from the east, which means they could be, you know, east of Israel would be anywhere between, um, say, uh, India, China, Pakistan, Afghanistan, any of these countries, you know, okay? so even from Russia. So wise men could come anywhere from the east east of israel would be any of these countries okay so we don't know from where these wise men came a lot of wise men came and they were inquiring about jesus being born which tells us that you know jesus was not born only for the jews jesus was born also for the gentiles so jesus came not only for the jews he also came for the gentiles but his mission his personal mission was towards the jews and later on the apostles were the ones is your time to Okay? So till then, only Jesus was ministering mainly to the Jews. Only a few non-Jews were reached during Jesus' life here on earth. Now, I told you Tyre and Sidon, maximum population is Gentiles, non-Jews. But there were a few Jews who were living in that area. Now, he went to a certain house. We don't know whose house it was. And he was staying there in the house. He did not want anybody to know about this visit. It was not so secret, but he could not keep it a secret. Why? Because Jesus was so famous. People knew who Jesus was. People knew what he had done. The news about the miracles that Jesus had worked in, in Capernaum and Galilee had traveled all these places. So they knew who Jesus was. So the news about Jesus reaching these two places could not be hidden. See, if Jesus is there in any person's house, if Jesus is there in any person's heart, if Jesus is there in any person's life, he cannot be hidden. You, know? you can't hide Jesus. You People will get to know whether Jesus is there in your heart or not. Whether Jesus is there in your house or not. See? So here, Jesus was there in a house and everybody knew, even though he tried to keep it a secret, everybody knew that Jesus was there. And what did they do? They came to Jesus asking for help. And among those people who came to ask Jesus for help was a certain woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit. We know unclean spirit means demonic spirit. One of the fallen angels. See, So one of these angels who are disobedient to God, who are rebellious towards God, this demonic spirit who is uh, like, you know, uh, Satan's uh, uh, friend, Satan's uh, soldier, this demonic spirit entered into this little girl. And this little girl was being disturbed by this demon. Okay, So this was happening. And this lady was coming to Jesus to ask him for help to set this baby free little daughter free of the demon so what do we understand about demons demons don't look at the age of a person we saw demons get into a man and make him like a superman you know he he was cutting himself but he was uh, walking around without clothes but he he had the strength of many men and he could break chains easily we saw that you no know, some time back a demonic man a demon filled man who was walking around and jesus cast out that demon and the demons actually went into the pigs and died okay so that demons do get inside people. They don't look at the age of a person. So they can get into even little girls. So here is a little girl who is now affected by this demon. And how did she come to Jesus? She came and fell at his feet, which shows that she was desperate. She was begging Jesus for healing. And it also shows her humility. You know? She was willing to go and touch the, the feet of a Jew. Now, 
the Syrophoenician women don't respect, uh, no, none of these people, Gentiles, actually respect the Jews. Jews don't like the Gentiles, Gentiles don't like the Jews. So for a woman like her to come and fall at the feet of Jesus, it shows how desperate she was for her daughter's healing. Now, it says, now the woman came and fell down at his feet. Uh, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. And he said to her, let the children be fed first. Okay, what does he mean by children? The word children actually means Jews. Okay, I have come to feed the Jews. I have come to feed my people, not the Gentiles. That's what Jesus was meaning. And he used the term, uh, "Take the children." It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Oh my! Why is Jesus calling her a dog? Actually, Jesus is not calling her an insulting word, dog. He is actually calling an example of dogs and like pet puppies. Okay, you have little puppies in the house. They so don't take the children's food and throw it to the puppy dogs who are in the house. Okay, that's not right. The children have to eat the food first. They are the priority. They are the important people. And then the puppies are not as important as the children, the children of the house. So Jesus said, I have come for the children to feed them, not to feed the puppies in the house. Okay. So he was saying that you are an outsider. Not, I'm not supposed to be helping you. I'm supposed to be helping my own people, the Jews. Now that would have been disturbing for the lady because she came seeking for her daughter's healing so Jesus was actually giving her a lower place than the Jews that's what he meant okay I am considering you as lower than the Jews my importance my priority is with the Jews not with the Gentiles so my priority is not with you I don't have to give you healing for your daughter you are below the Jews let the Jews be given the importance first Afterwards, we'll look at your case. You know. So he was actually denying her request. Now, what did she do? She did not get disappointed. She did not get discouraged. In fact, she begged her all the more. What did she say? She said, yes, Lord. Yet even the puppy dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. You know that? When the puppy dogs are hanging around the, you know, the, uh, under the table, what happens? When the children are eating the bread, not everything goes into their mouth. You know? Some crumbs from their mouth will fall down. And what will the puppy dogs do? They are hungry also. You know, These puppies are very hungry. They will rush to the bread and they will take the piece that has fallen from the table and they will eat it. So, she says, consider me like that puppy dog, no problem. But bits and pieces falling to the ground, that is enough for me. You don't have to give me full attention. Give me a little attention, just like how crumbs fall from the table I'll be satisfied with that see so she kept on persisting she said I accept that you call me lower than the Jews I don't mind it but I definitely want healing for my daughter she held on she persisted and what did Jesus do Jesus was impressed you no know? he said to her, for this statement you may go your way the demon has left your daughter he decided to give her healing if you check Matthew chapter 15 verse 28, the same parallel passage which has this you know, event, Matthew chapter 15 verse 28, the final verse in that, it actually says, Jesus says, great is your faith. Woman, great is your faith. Jesus really appreciated her faith. What is her faith? Her faith kept on holding on, saying that only Jesus can heal my child and I want him to heal my child, no matter even if I, he insults me, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on trying till he heals my daughter. That shows great faith. That shows that she believed that Jesus could do it. See, Jesus alone could do it. That's why she kept on persisting. So, her reply shows great faith in Jesus. Now, the surprising thing is, Jesus had done so many miracles in the other parts and the Jews themselves did not have such great faith. The Jews whom Jesus came to, Jews, Jews whom Jesus spoke to, did not have this kind of faith that the woman had. The woman had great faith in Jesus. And that's what Jesus says. You're, you have great faith, your request has been granted. Your prayer has been answered. And she went back and she found her daughter cured. Okay. Now, regarding her prayer, she did not come re requesting for help for herself. 
she came requesting for help for somebody else when you pray not for yourself but for somebody else that prayer is called an intercession okay you are interceding for somebody i n t e r c e d i n g interceding interceding means oraku vendi madhyastha edu prarthikya i am praying for my friend i am praying for my father i am praying for my mother it's not praying for me i am praying for somebody else that is called interceding or intercession a prayer of intercession she gives us an example of how to intercede for others how to pray for others when you pray for others or if you pray for yourself also keep your prayers short she made her prayer short and sweet so same like that make your prayers short and sweet second her prayer was humble she accepted okay i am lesser than the jews no problem i don't deserve your mercy i don't deserve anything from you lord she kept herself humble in her prayer she shows that she was a humble person so keep your prayers short keep your prayers humble you don't deserve anything from god we don't deserve anything from god we are not good people we are not like you know we tell santa claus i was good enough this year you can give me your best gift so, you know jesus doesn't look like santa claus he looks at your heart and he knows how good we have been or how bad we have been and we don't deserve anything from god why because we are wicked people no we are sinful people and so we don't deserve anything from god if god gives us anything it is only his grace it is only his mercy it is not anything that you and i deserve so he kept this prayer she kept this prayer short and she kept this prayer humble and she respected jesus her prayer shows that she respected jesus as the healer is it you are the savior you are the healer you are the messiah i don't have any doubt on that she kept on respect even after jesus called her a little puppy she did not lose her respect for jesus she kept on respecting jesus she did not say how dare you call me a puppy i'm not a puppy i'm a human being no you know so she didn't say anything like that she was showing respect again to jesus so in our prayers we need to be respectful then her prayer was depending entirely on the mercy of god see her prayer was depending entirely on the mercy of god she did not depend on anything any merit by herself she did not say you know i am coming from this background i am from syrophoenicia so you better heal myself no she did not say that she did not say uh, you know you uh, uh, you guys you know you are jews and you are you are actually not you know anybody special no, she was depending entirely on the mercy of god she could not demand anything from god we cannot demand from god and say lord i am your child heal me so we don't deserve that also right so we have to depend on god's mercy finally she kept on requesting okay that means persevering or persisting we can't give up just because the answer does not come immediately not all our prayers are answered immediately sometimes you have to keep on praying for that person sometimes your friend is sick maybe it will take two or three times that you have to pray for that friend to be healed maybe you have to pray for many days and months sometimes you have to pray for years for god to heal that person but you can do it you have to keep on persisting in your prayer okay keep on praying it and one day the lord will definitely hear your prayer she did not give up because jesus did not give her answer the first time she kept on trying again and again second time jesus heard it and said okay you have such faith you great answer you gave i will heal your daughter see so when you persist in your prayer god will answer so keep on keeping on is persisting okay so i said five things that we can also copy from her prayer keep it short keep it humble keep it respectful don't rely on yourself but on the merit of on the mercy of god depend only on the mercy of god and finally keep on persisting in your prayer don't give up just because the answer is delayed don't give up because you think jesus is not answering no and the right time the answer will come you just have to keep on praying on now finally what does this passage teach us about jesus one thing that this passage teaches us jesus did not find a gentile unclean see the jews found the gentiles unclean they would not eat with the jews they would not share a table with the jews they would definitely not help a lady who is coming and asking for a healing for a child they would not do that 
they consider all pagans as unclean so for jew a pagan is unclean a gentile is unclean for for jesus nobody was unclean you know the last chapter in last chapter chapter 7 so same chapter verse 19 he declared all foods as clean so for jesus no food is unclean and for jesus no person is unclean okay he he does not see it look at any person and say oh you are unclean no he he does not see any food as unclean he does not see any person as unclean second thing we learn from this passage is that sometimes god tests our faith sometimes god tests our faith you know he wants to really see whether we mean what we are saying when you say i believe in you lord do you really mean that when i say i love you lord do you really mean that so god tests our faith just to prove you know how genuine it is you know when you have uh, some sickness or something you go to the medical uh, hospital and you get uh, your checkup done okay why do you do the they call it tests so okay do the medical test why so that when you do the medical test you find out what is wrong with you or what is right with you right you say okay i have a high blood pressure how do you know i tested for it i tested you know do you have diabetes i tested my blood and i found out whether i have it see so testing is actually good it will tell you what is wrong with you or what is right with you the same way god tests you to show you what is right with you or what is wrong with you so sometimes you know we may say things we don't mean it we don't mean those things from our heart and god tests you to find out whether it is genuine or not okay i'm going to give you this passage it comes in proverbs proverbs chapter 17 and verse 3 i'm going to take it in my bible i'll i got it in your chat you can just copy it from there proverbs chapter 17 and verse 3 okay proverbs is in the old testament and it's just after the psalms proverbs chapter 17 and verse 3 i'm going to read it in my bible you can follow it in yours proverbs chapter 17 verse 3 tells us the crucible is for silver and the furnace is for gold and the lord tests our hearts okay the lord tests hearts now it is god who tests our hearts he knows what your heart is made of he can see right through what is the motive of your heart see how is your heart so you can't cheat your god you know god can see right through your heart so just like how he he checks silver just like how a person a, a goldsmith checks gold the same way you know fire actually makes it more and more pure you can test gold by putting it in fire and you'll see all the unwanted things will be burnt up but the gold it has got a high high melting point so fire will actually purify the gold so when god tests us it is to purify us it is to make us more like jesus it is to make us more holy that's why he tests us so testing you know we don't like test papers in school also you know this is a season of test papers christmas season so everybody hates test papers but test papers are good it actually gives you a test of whether you have understood everything the teacher has taught you see same way we do the quiz you know every day uh, after this bible study we do a quiz which jibina chachan puts on online and then you guys appear for the quiz and you try to find out whether you have understood what i am saying here in each class see so it's very important that you take the test so that you will know how much you have understood how much what you say you mean from your heart so god uses test to prove what kind of a person you are not to himself he knows who you are but he wants to prove you to yourself are you truthful to what you're saying do you mean what you say that's what god shows us he examines our faith thirdly if you have genuine faith god rewards you you know god gives you the rewards the answer to your prayers those are the rewards that god gives you see so genuine faith is rewarded by jesus if you are just speaking with your mouth and doesn't mean it in your heart you don't mean it in your heart then god doesn't have to reward you but if you speak with the mouth and you mean the same thing in your heart then jesus says he appreciate like how she appreciated this woman she would he would appreciate you and me also he say oh great is your faith manu great is your faith joshua great is your faith and great is your faith nathaniel you know he would appreciate your faith and he would say here is my reward for you and he gave this woman's child her healing whatever you pray for if you are praying genuinely by faith you are praying god will answer your prayers and give you your reward so for jesus no person is unclean jesus tests our faith 
Why does he do that? He examines our faith just to show us whether we are genuine, we are, whether we prove you know, who we are. And thirdly, Jesus rewards genuine faith. And finally, it shows us that he doesn't have to be present with the patient to heal that person. He can just say the word from here and that patient will be healed far away from Jesus. So his word can cross time and space and do its work. See, that's how God's word is. God's work does, is not limited. God's work is not, you know, God's word is not limited to time and space. He just have to say the word. Wherever that person is, that person will be healed there. Okay. So, Jesus does not need to be present with the patient to heal that person. Right. So, physically he is not present here. He is there in heaven now. Can he heal us? Yes. His word will cross time and space and heal the person whom we are praying for. We believe that. The Bible says so. He doesn't have to be physically present. He can just say the word wherever he is right now and he can heal the person far away from him. He has the authority to cross time and space. That's what this passage tells us. Okay, so we said four things this passage tells us. For Jesus, no person is unclean. For Jesus, he can test our faith. He can examine our faith. Thirdly, Jesus rewards genuine faith. If he finds genuine faith in you, he appreciates it and he rewards us. And finally, Jesus does not need to be present near a patient to heal that person. So he can answer our prayers wherever he is. He is right now in heaven. No problem. God is everywhere, by the way. But then he's, he doesn't have to be physically present here to answer our prayers. He can do it from where he is right now. Just have to say the word. So, that is the authority and the might that Jesus has. So, many things we can learn from this passage. And these are a few things that we could find out. A lady who was appreciated for her great faith. Jesus did not find this kind of a faith even among the Jews. He found this great faith among a Gentile. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that this kind of faith would be found in each of our hearts. When you test us, you would find us to have genuine faith, O Lord Father. Faith that trusts in God. Faith that believes every word that you speak. Faith that holds on even when we are discouraged. Faith that keeps on persisting even when the answer is delayed. That's the kind of faith that God is looking for. Help us to have that kind of faith in our hearts. We give you praise and we give you glory. We thank you a lot for every one of our young people who are writing their exams. Give them peace and give them patience. And give them, O oh Lord, the heart to hold on to your word. Every word that they have studied, help them to remember and write it in their exams. Father, we pray that through their studies, then the name of God would be glorified in their lives. We thank you and praise you for this Christmas celebration that you gave us, the wonderful songs that these young children sang. Lord, we pray that you would extend their gifts and help them to use it for the extension of the kingdom of God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.